Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fun, and today I have some scalloped treat bags. And I use the new Perfectly Plaid Fall 12 by 12 paper to cut these treat bags. The die is slightly bigger than a six by six sheet. That's the only reason I didn't use the six by six. But look how gorgeous all of these patterns are. They're just beautiful. I love the new Perfectly Plaid Fall collection. I cut the cardstock in half so it's six inches by 12 and you can get an entire box from one half a sheet of paper. So it didn't quite cut all of the way so I just ran that through one more time but you can cut it by die cutting this first panel you can see here and not only can you get an entire gift box from one half sheet of 12 by 12 paper, but there's some space at the end. So if you wanna use the put a bow on it die to die cut some bows, you can totally do that as well. Very easy to get multiple die cuts out of just a half sheet of 12 by 12 paper. I didn't get these as close as you really could on this particular half sheet of paper. And I'm gonna use all those little scraps to die cut some bows from the put a bow on it. I went ahead and used lots of the patterns from the Perfectly Plaid Fall Collection to make a whole bunch of treat boxes. You could do anything with these treat boxes. I put some little dog treats next to them in the photos just because on a couple of the boxes I used the little paw print and the little bone from the Happy Howl Howl Loween stamp set from Lawn Fun. And I thought it would be fun to kind of give these as little treat boxes for your friends who might have pets. Um, but you totally do not have to use them for that. They can be treat boxes for um, school, they could be treat boxes for just friends or little gift boxes for you know whoever depending on what you cut them out of even though these are the fall quote unquote fall collection papers i think they would work for a lot of different times because they don't the way i decorated them doesn't scream halloween but you could definitely use them for that if you wanted to I like to use a bone folder to go over all those score lines and really crease them well. And then I go ahead and do that for both halves of the box, place some of that adhesive, which I got a little aggressive with it, so I just peeled it off real quick. That's not gonna show, so you won't see where I peeled off some of the paper. I like to use a strong adhesive, so a lot of times I use the glue glider permatac adhesive because it helps keep these boxes together. Put a little adhesive on the bottom of the box as well. Then just slip one inside of the other, line those up, and then secure each side. Now those little notches in, in both sides of this scalloped uh, treat box, you take the two top halves, pinch them together, and then poke them through each of those sides, and you have a treat box assembled. Very, very easy very quick and easy so super cute and i think with the this plaid paper you don't really need a whole lot now i went ahead and die cut a whole bunch of these boxes like i said and i've got some post-it tape stuck to me so you can see here this is a little bit better on how to get the most out of your sheet of paper i even have that little the smallest put a bow on it die run those through my Big shot and I did these assembly line style what I did was die cut all of the treat boxes put them in a stack die cut all of the bows put those in a stack and then I assembled all of the boxes and I had I die cut all of the rectangles that I'm going to use to adorn the front all the little tags to hang from the top stamped all of those, assembled those, and then put those together, or adhered them rather, to each of the treat boxes. So I'm a big fan of, if at all possible, doing assembly line style with this kind of a project. These are so simple that they would be really easy to you know, duplicate 
for an entire classroom of kids or maybe you have a lot of trick-or-treaters or nieces and nephews or grandchildren or whatever that you could do this for birthday party favors these would be so cute for birthday party favors just change up what you stamp on the tags or the little labels on the front you can get as complicated or as easy as you want. I definitely went the easy route because I was trying to show as much of the plaid paper as possible because I love it. This is my favorite print from um, the whole collection. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. And one of the cool things about the prints is it's the same print on both sides or the same colors but one side of the paper is the plaid at a diagonal and the other side it is straight so the inside of the box will not be white it won't be an odd crazy different color the whole box is going to look just like the front it just will be either straight or diagonal depending on which pattern or which direction of the pattern you place on the outside of the box and I really can't believe that I didn't notice that that post-it note was on me the entire time I was doing this video. It's kind of funny. Because until I watched this, I had no idea that it was even stuck on me. That's some fast and furious treat box making. Now I have a bunch of die cut rectangles here using the small stitched rectangles die collection this is the smallest one and i am just using the section of the greeting that says treats this is a greeting from the happy halloween stamp set stamping it on each of these labels now treats does not have to mean for pets this could totally if you put a different little icon next to it would work great for a different kind of treat i just thought this would be fun for my friends who have little pets and this would just be a cute little treat box to give to them with maybe a little chewy or their favorite little treats. Now I put the dog paw on a couple of these. I am using fake tan sunflower and merman inks. I picked those inks because they coordinated nicely with the plaid papers I'm using. I also used the little bone from Happy Halloween and then the solid star. So you can see you could do lots of different ways. Those stars, do not totally say Halloween at all. On the little circle tags, which that tag is from the Stitched Circle Tags die collection, I used a new greeting from the brand new Tiny Tag Sayings stamp set. It says, A Little Something For You. I love this greeting. It's teeny tiny, which is also great. And so it'll fit small tags. There are also some... Um, tiny tag dies that you could use if you wanted to. I just kind of like this little circle tag from the older stitched circle tags die collection. The black ink is all black licorice ink from Lawn Fawn. After I adhered the stitched rectangle to a scalloped rectangle and I just did white on white, I kind of like that look. Again, trying to keep it simple, trying to keep the focus on the plaid paper. Um, I will attach those to the front of the boxes. I am putting together my bow here and unfortunately it's a little bit, I didn't realize I was out of the frame when I put it together. I'm going to be doing some additional projects coming soon using the larger size bow so you'll see that a little better. It really is easy to put together. You just fold in the two flaps no matter what size bow you're using. I like to put a little glue dot there in the center. You wrap that little um, end piece around. I usually use another glue dot to secure that and then I use a glue dot to attach that to those bow ends. Now you can use it like this where the bow ends stick out each side or there's a score line in the middle that you can fold in half and so the bow ends will hang down depending on what kind of look you're going for. I did not want my bow ends to interfere with the greeting on the labels so instead I just left them out to the ends gives it a nice finished look and i repeated this for all of my bows and then i simply again assembly line style attached all of the labels to the front of the boxes 
tied the little tag on the top of the boxes with some lawn trimmings twine, attached the bow right here, and that is it. Thanks for joining me for these Lawn Fawn treat boxes using the new scalloped treat box dies and the put a bow on it dies. All the supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos showcasing Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.